Well, hello. This is Lana D. Welcome to another short devotional. I'm taking you right to the source today. You know, in Ecclesiastes 1.9, this is the uh, contemporary English version, says, Everything that has happened has happened before. Nothing is new. Nothing under the sun. And I think about that when I look at some of our devotional. I could, you know, paraphrase or revise what has been said, but I believe that God has some truths and principles that last time itself. And so I want to just share a few of those with you today because I think they'll bless you just as they have blessed me. This first one is by, let me look down here for you so I say it right, is by F.B. Meyer. Now he lived in the 1800s, 19, early 1900s, and so his language was somewhat difficult to understand. And I took a dictionary with me and I paraphrased what he said. But for the most part, it's what he did say in his devotional. And I want you to read along with me if you've had not a, sh a long time for devotions. And that's the reason why I do this. Then this, I'm hoping, will give you just a little bit of time with the Lord. Christ, our friend. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known unto you. Jesus said that in John 15.15. 15. I have read somewhere that when Michelangelo was in the height of his fame, a boy named Raphael, destined to be his worthy successor, was introduced to him as a promising pupil. At first, the lad was employed in the simplest duties of the studio, cleaning brushes, mixing paints, but as he developed the qualities of exactness, punctuality, and understanding of how Michelangelo worked, he became entrusted with increasing responsibility until the master made him his friend and confidant. We also come to Christ first as redeemed from the slavery of Satan to next becoming his servants, and then he calls us his friends. A friend will show you the real self and share their inner secrets. All the world may suppose that it knows a famous man, but after all, if he calls me his friend, I expect to get closer to him and hear from his own lips things he would consider his confidential information. That is how it is with the Lord Jesus. He reveals himself to those who love him and keeps his word. He will not do this with those who are not his followers. A friend will be interested in his friend's life, interested in his goals. It is a joy to Christ when those that he loves are able to take a part in his worldwide redemptive plans. For us, of course, it's a high honor but it is as great a pleasure and delight to the Lord as it is for us. It is wonderful that Jesus is glad to have us as his fellow workers. A friend will be interested in our failures and successes. That is how our Lord is. When he sees some danger or trouble threatening us, he intercedes in prayer for us. If we fail to do the right thing, if we fall back into our sinful ways, he meets us with the same tender affection and does not stop loving us, but feels great sorrow with us and is ready to point out the cause of our failure and encourages us to try again. If we go through hard times and are persecuted or bullied because we stood for what is right, he meets us as we come out of the fight, glad for us, eager to refresh us in our weariness, careful to heal any wound that we may have received. That is what the fellowship with Jesus is like. He is always the same. His love never changes or weakens. He never fails to work on our behalf. It is worthwhile to make every effort to keep his commandments and give our lives totally to him. 
as he has given his life for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that Jesus Christ may become dear to us. May we love him as a personal friend and hide ourselves in him or be inseparable in the hourly consciousness of his presence. May we have no taste or desire for things which he would disapprove. Let his love keep us from living our lives just for ourselves. Let us live our lives for his glory. Amen and amen. That's F.B. Meyer. As I was reading that, I thought about being hidden in Christ. What does it mean? Randy Elkhorn wrote this last year in March, and I thought it was worthy to be read to you. Colossians 3, 1 and 4 tells us that as believers, in a sense, we're already in heaven with Christ. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Our intimate link with Christ in his redemptive work makes us inseparable from him even now just as friends isn't it as we walk with him and commune with him in this world we experience a faint foretaste of heaven's delights and wonders though it's true that Christ is with us and within us while we're on earth it also works in the other direction we're united with Christ so much so that we are seated with him in heaven. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.6 Notice that the following description written to believers alive on earth is in the present perfect, not future tense which re expresses a completed action. You have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteousness, men made, man made perfect. Hebrews 12. 22 through 23. In a metaphysical sense, we're already entered into heaven's community. By seeing ourselves as part of the heavenly society, we can learn to rejoice now in what heaven's residents rejoice in. They rejoice in God, His glory, His grace, and His beauty. They rejoice in repentant sinners, the saints, faithfulness, and Christ-likeness, and the beauty of God's creation. They rejoice in the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom and the coming judgment of sin. Heaven, then, isn't only our future home. It's our home already, waiting over the next hill. If we really grasp this truth, it will have a profound effect on our holiness. A man who sees himself seated with Christ in heaven, in the very presence of a God to whom the angels cry out, Holy, 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 won't spend his evenings viewing internet pornography. No wonder the devil is so intent on keeping us from grasping our standing in Christ. For if we see ourselves in heaven with Christ, we'll be drawn to worship and serve him here and now, creating ripples in heaven's water that will extend outward for all eternity. That's today's devotional. I hope it blesses you as it has blessed me. 
Let us be a friend with Christ Jesus. Let us live a holy life, holy and acceptable to God, knowing this, that we have one foot in heaven as we stand here on earth. God is loving. He loves you and he loves me. Until next time, I remain your friend, Lana D.